Greetings, beloved, in the name of the Most High. Uh, this will have to, to do. I've done maybe f f four or five hours of audio, but something seems to go wrong. Some of these seem to be for me. I, I may share the last one. I'm just not sure right now. I'm just not sure. I think it was something like, oh, it was definitely... Uh, you know, two, two and a half, three hours almost. And uh, sometimes when it's that long, some of it is just easy conversation. And, I, and I'm not sure that, that I'm, I'm serving you well with having a casual conversation, though. You know, the idea was to strip away the BS, strip away the, any sense of entitlement or, or, or title any sense of, you, you know, to, to strip it down to verite, audio verite. Interesting, verite is the root word for truth. And what cinema verite was just, was taking live cinema. In other words, you're taking random cinema, just cinema of situations, you know, taking video, I guess you'd say today. They called that cinema verite, and it was, uh, it, it was done as a film, as an art form, and... Many French directors, cinema verite, French, and uh, some American directors also embrace the concept. Interestingly enough, it just means like taking wild video, okay, of like, you know, your dinner or whatever, unscripted. It's interesting how when they say unscripted, it means verite or truth. Meaning, I, it's unscripted, I'm just going to, uh, it's right from the heart. I'm not telling you a lie or a fiction, which I've fabricated a story, you know, that would be a lie. But verite would be if I just put the camera on you all and saw you in your natural bad selves. That would be audio verite if I did it with a microphone. So we've tried to... Uh, you know, at the same time, I'm as formal as a lawyer in a courtroom. <laughs> at the same time, you know, about audio, it's a, like the voice. You know, audio, it's the music. It's all to, together as one. And there's a certain vibe or truth that comes through, and that's what I want in the music as well. Uh, it seems that so many musicians are so busy trying to please other people. And they like when it sounds like real good, like someone they're a fan of or something. And we have to just get rid of that whole idea. I just don't want anything to do with that. Um, I, any musical creation I do, I don't want to compare it to anything else. I just want to go for whatever the truth of that thing is, as silly as it may be. Somebody else may have an idea to make something into a grand production. That's fine. But I'm not you. You're not me. What's true for me right now is to deconstruct, uh, you know, and the other thing is just getting into production, you know, producing is hard. Producing these audios is hard. You've got to push yourself into it. You know, producing tracks is hard. You've got to push yourself into it. It can't just be what, well, for me, it's like what feels good and what, what's having fun while you're doing some kind of work, you've, it's got to be about fun and about this carefree thing. But, you know, I'm a free spirit. There are very few free spirits who are musicians. And, you know, it's so strange because it's all so controlled, you know. There's such a hierarchy and such a, uh, a, uh, a ladder. And I'm like, that's, that's the reptiles, man. What, what are you doing? The best musician in the room is the guy having the most fun. Don't you know that? You just got to forget about this. Or like, you know, preparing to hit him big with something. You know, one, one mistake I keep falling into, it's fading away now as I go further. I intend to go all the way to the very edge, whatever that is. I want to knock on the edge of the set like Truman did in the Truman Show and find out that, hey, it was all fake, just like I thought. And I want to write about things like that. Because, see, that's the truth. The truth will set you free. You know, one of the biggest things we've done here 
I think looking back on it, and when I say we, I mean me and God, and God and me, or whatever. So I say we, not, some people say we, I don't know who they mean. It's like we, yes, I'm a multiple personality we, or I'm a split personality we. I mean we, God and me, whenever I say we. But one of the things we've done here, if anything, is to produce an accurate picture of reality as it is that is objective in any way, shape, and always shapes and forms anywhere in the universe, anywhere in any dimension, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere. And I found that over the years, that picture, you know, they don't argue with me because they can't. Because it's kind of like it gets down to, well, that's your opinion, man, you know? It's, 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 we're dealing with things of faith, and we're going to get to faith in a minute. We're dealing with things unseen. So, I mean, anyone can say anything. And they do. The Internet's polluted with people saying anything. Oddly enough, I'm listed as being evil and uh, apostate um, by w- women who to me seem completely insane. I mean, totally, 100% bonkers. And not rooted in any form of reality whatsoever. And it's just... And, and, and they... If they see something move out there, they, oh, I don't care. You know, I don't care. I mean, you know, maybe it's be good not to be called names, be, but that's just like shows you the mentality of most Christians is that they're like little kids in a sandbox throwing their feces at each other. It's just, uh, it's no different than politics. In fact, faith in politics, you know, faith, I won't call it faith, it's churchianity and politics play a great role. But we began to unravel the Genesis story. The way God wanted it unraveled, which was the truth. Because you see, the problem with Christianity is based on a lie. That's right. And it's not based, first of all, it's not based on following Jesus Christ. It's based on scripture, based on a creation story in which the people teaching it or understanding it or the theologians miss the actual creation story and they teach something that is not true. And because of this, once you begin a few degrees off on your course, say if you're a sailor, and you start sailing for the, you know, for uh, the the island or wherever you're trying to go, if you're a couple of degrees off the beginning, you'll never get there. And that's my theory about why the church failed. And um, if you see the book of Jude, you'll see the failure. It failed because liars, lizards intervened, interceded because the lizards have dominion over us in this situation. That's why there was a lizard or a serpent in the garden, mentioned as a, as a serpent, he's going to get be on his, on his face, you know, slithering along, a reptile. Who had the power to corrupt the DNA of man? Who had power over man? And, um, you know, in the end of the day, there's, uh, it becomes a spiritual battle, you know. The, 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 uh, the, there'll be enmity between the serpent and man and, you know, the bruising of, of the serpent's head, uh, the, the, the cutting of the Achilles tendon, you know, the, the, the crippling of, of the heel and, and, the, and the bashing of the head. Okay, that will be the relationship with the serpent but the point is, and man. But the point is, still, they are, in a sense, this hierarchy... If I look at the world and I look at the structure of Western civilization, let's say, and Eastern, I see a rote military um, reptilian hierarchy. Um, the idea of uniforms, epaulets, badges, and things, that comes from the serpent. Obelisks and, you know, um, the whole sacrificial cult type of thing. Uh, coldness, you know, if you, if you see the lizards today... In Washington, D.C., there's plenty of lizards, but they're cold. They, they will just uh, kill people and not think anything about it. Never have I seen such callousness toward, uh, toward life and such, such carelessness in, in 
not even trying to cover up the fact that you just don't care from the president on down. From the president on down. They, they just don't care. They don't care about life. But that's lizardine. It's not that they don't care. It's, just, it's more like you th- think of the Chinese military when they have people in prison, how they treat them. That's exactly how the people here are because it's reptilian or, if you like, luciferian, which is reptilian. It's another species that has... uh, Now, the idea of temptation, i.e. the forbidden fruit. Um, The fundamental flaw is this, and this is the flaw in the logic that cannot be refuted, you know, I mean, you can say, I, don't, I, I disagree with you, and that's fine. You can refute it that way, but you can't do it logically. Logically, number one, God is all-knowing, omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent, and wrote the end from the beginning of the story that we're in. Uh, meaning everything that you do, everything you say, everything you choose is already written. And because of that, he made Adam to be Adam to do what Adam did and Eve to do what Eve did and the serpent to do what the serpent did. He scripted all of them. If it's anything less than that, then he wouldn't know what they would do. He would be in suspense. And if he was, and if he were, and if he is, then he would not be the creator, the one who made all things, who wrote the end from the beginning, who is God. He would not be God. And that's it. That's basically it. And, but the thing is, it may seem like a small thing to you. That's why we repeated it over and over, because it's no small thing. Once you begin with a lie like that, i.e. Adam didn't know, you know, that God didn't know what Adam was going to choose, and, Eve and, and he was looking around, walking around the garden looking for Adam, and then he was just absolutely horrified. How dare you eat of that tree? Well, therefore, that's it generations from you, Adam, are going to be ruined because of you touching that tree I told you not to. Mm -hmm. God became a character in his own story. And he's actually walking around the garden, yet he's the author of the story. And obviously, he can't walk around the garden. He's a spirit. No one has seen God at any time, amen? That's what the Bible says. Because he's a spirit. He's invisible. So, right there, uh, if you want to know where I walk out on Bible study, it's right there. Um, When they teach about the rapture, I'm out on my feet and I'm gone. That being said, translation happens all the time. All the time. Uh, Minimal translation, meaning uh, location, location, and exit. Translation, which a lot of people are like the rabbit. You, you know, Enoch pleased God by faith. And God was pleased with Enoch because you can only please, the only way, you, no one can please God. The only thing you can have is faith. And somehow that please, pleases him and he takes you. Uh, but this collective rapture idea uh, is a lie, so I'm out. The minute they start talking about um, the prophets come in and start t- t- saying that this scripture is that, that of Daniel, which was about, which was already fulfilled, is about this time now. Um, or this is the Daniel timeline. Or this is what's going to happen. Or we're in tribulation now. Which I've heard people say for the last 20 years, 30 years, whatever. In fact, I've heard him say it my whole life, so I tried to avoid Christians because I, I said, you're full of it, and it turned out I was right, they were wrong. And the ones today who are saying this is it, they're wrong too. And they'll always be wrong because it's not about that. See, while we're all thinking in 3D terms, there's a whole other thing going on. This truth and reality is New Jerusalem, It already exists. Yes, it already exists. It does not have to be made, but it's the crowning work of God's creation. Yes, but it's already created because all things, you know, there's no time, they say. 
So we are definitely stuck here in a prison situation. Imprisoned. DNA corrupted. Because some of the DNA we have is makes us interdimensional beings. You know that. Makes us beings of light. You know that. So it would have to be corrupted to tether this creation of hominid, homo sapien, here to the earth. And um, there has to be a way out of that situation. And it is obviously through the Lord who will liberate from that. That being said, those that serve the serpent, those who serve the dragon, is that one and the same? Those who serve the obelisk, one and the same. Hello, Washington. Those who serve the pyramid, one and the same. Hello, Western civilization. Those who serve the, uh, hello, Maya. Maya and uh, Egypt equal brothers in the Quetzalcoatl, the serpent. Hello. Hello. Am I listening? Those who serve that. I I just urge you to see the Mel Gibson movie Apocalypto because that's what you become. Or go look at Cleopatra. That's what you become. Or any movie about Julius Caesar. That's what you become. And then the civilization, what does it do? Falls. What was the point of Quetzalcoatl? To destroy the civilization of those who worship it. Because it's based on a lie. Entire Western civilization is not based on Judeo-Christian principles. It's based on a lie. It's based on um, worshiping the created rather than the creator. Indeed, the only way you could have a, quote, civilization is to lie. So when we see liars at the helm, it's because we can see now more than we could before. But they've always been liars like that. It's always been the same as what you see in Washington, D.C. or at the U.N. or wherever. It's always been the same as it is now. It's just more publicized because of the Internet. But even that is getting slowly under control. Between the NSA, the CIA, it's not about uh, monitoring everyone. They were already monitoring everyone a long time ago. Remember Echelon? Every phone call, everything. Recorded, monitored, cataloged. Uh, Look, they're just doing what's in them to do, which is is the all-seeing eye. The all-seeing eye is the thing that glues together civilization. It's that there are no secrets between souls. You're in prison. They want inside you, your mind, your heart, your soul, and make sure that it's all locked up. Anything that isn't or is other is to be uh, rejected. Anything that is conformed, i.e., you know, with the epaulets and the little stripes and the badges and things and the uniforms and the salute and all that, is... uh, key to reptilian domination. You know, yes, we root for the, our troops and all that, but I mean, the whole, I'm talking about the, I'm looking at this in a sociological way, the structure, in an almost an anthropological way, like I'm from another planet. The structure of armies marching and so forth. And yes, I understand that, you know, that you know Yahweh did not quibble with the army of David and the army of Gideon and the various armies in there and they're being organized without being organized you can't be an army but it goes to a certain extreme where you see all these like sorcery laden third world countries where their dictators all have these same outfits on because they serve the Chinese are a perfect example of the ultimate Luciferian same symbols same uniforms given to them by the lizards period and the same coldness Anything that disagrees with you, you throw in prison, you get rid of it with no compassion and no thought because lizardine consciousness is, you know, what you're seeing displayed, say, in Washington regarding uh, deaths of people and things. You see that coldness there. That's reptilian. They don't have compassion for other people. And humans that are hybrids that become that have no, uh, they don't have compassion. I mean, they kind of take care of their own but they really are a different species, even though they may have human skin. And they are more militaristic and more apt to, uh, they just, you know, they don't, th- they're not free spirits. They don't, they're not poets. They don't think, really. They just kind of operate in a hierarchy and expect everyone to operate likewise. And it's, um, you know, I feel sorry for them, but they're, 
they're fulfilling a purpose. And when they die, they're gone. They're, they're, they perish. They, 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 you know, you need a soul to go on and they don't have one because, you know, that's the, the trade-off. Okay. So when you take the hierarchy of say Hollywood and the music industry uh, or entertainment, uh, really, we should just call it entertainment. Uh, it's just entertainment. It's, in other words, it's no big deal, but they, they make a big deal out of it. Celebrity worship and all that is lizardine. It's reptilian. Um, when I say reptilian, I mean to harvest man as a, as a farm animal and, and also to end up destroying that when, you know, destroying man. I mean, yes, it's the I, I goal of Satan to destroy man, but, but first, I think it's important to interject this into the discussion. First, uh, Satan, the lizard, must basically harvest what man has. Take that which God made and twist it into something that he can use. The people that serve him think they're going to get a place at the table. Not true. His intention is to kick them all off the ladder by having them do themselves, in which they do every, every civilization he's ever started wound up with you know man killing man and the civilization being just civilization civilization being destroyed and the people not getting anywhere oh there's a few elites at the top that are flying around in the tin cans thinking we just need more dna or more something we need more technology we need to bust through this it's like yes are you figuring out the firmament's painted in that the actual fabric of creation is itself a wall you can't get through that your idea of interdimensional travel is simply disappearing and reappearing, but not really completely, totally free. Even time travel, not totally, completely free, not completely, 100%, you know, predictable because there are so many streams. You know, being completely outside your depth because God's intelligence is so far beyond even billions of people linked together that it's not funny. Suffice to say... I see so many people, and I'm going to take this to heart too, today, and from now on. So many people living to please other people and living in relation to other people to where, like a person like me, might be depressed because I see how cruel the situation is out there today. And it makes me cry, and I can't get going, and I've, I've had a hard time with it. Not being able to produce as much as I would like because... You know, I mean, I could always become a friend with the world and I could produce tons of stuff and run around. But, you know, the idiocy of that is the Magical Mystery Tour ends and it <laughs> serving the Nazis, being a Jew and serving the Nazis to get the Jews gassed and then in the ovens so I can have a couple of steak dinners and live another hour after they're all dead. It makes no sense to me. And they're not going to give you any of the trinkets of the world, which is the lizards. It's all based on rank and it's a meritocracy. Unless you betray your fellow brother. Unless you kill Abel. You're not going to get your contract, your day in the sun, your Academy Award, whatever. I mean, it, it's a symbolic thing. It doesn't look like you're doing anything really wrong. But I mean, you got to, you know, you're going to have to... Uh, there, there's never been an exception to that rule. And uh, you say, well, what about Pat Boone? <laughs> like I said, there's never been an exception to that rule. A lot of those people think that they can somehow be footloose and fancy, you know, play, play footsie with, with, with God or somehow, you know, have God understands I'm just a sinner, you know. It's like, no, you're a traitor, not a, um, your choice shows you don't believe. It's either or, a friend. Either a friend of the world or a friend of God. You can't be both. Lot's wife looked back as she missed her friends. When she was leaving Sodom, she was left her friends. And, you know, she had associations and friends and family and extended family, I'm sure. And all kinds of uh, people that she cared about. <laughs> She was told, if you look back, you're going to turn to a pillar of salt. She looked back and turned to a pillar of salt. 
Um, if you go the way of the flesh or the world, then you will eventually uh, fall into total sorrow because the flesh disappoints. It's wearing out. The good vibe and good feeling wears out. People betray one another. That's why you need the rock. Something solid. Christ, Jesus, the Lord. He is the one. He's also the word. The word is God. Amen. I don't know why that's an issue for people. I uh, rejected them from my life because I don't believe they're brethren if they see it that way. I have, I, I am sure, I, I guarantee you 100% wherever I'm going after this life, I will not see them. There is something really, really <clears throat> dangerous and demonic about a person that sees, that doesn't understand the identity of Christ, even it's, when it's put in your face. There's something very, very dangerous about that person. So, you know. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Things which are seen are not made from other things which are seen. Amen. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God has translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, period. I think we could say that that sums up the entire issue. If you belong to God, I've seen the funniest things happen with people trying to conform to the world over and over, trying to get that... uh, you know, that, that, that movie deal, that record deal, trying to, you know, fit in somehow, trying to, saying they'll do anything for it. And somehow God keeps making it so their hopes are dashed because it's like, nah, he wants you. Someone said to me the other day, well, what about so-and-so? They're going into this situation. And it's like, I said, you know what? If God's in it, it'll, it's going to just, it, you know, it may be all exciting for a while, but it's going to get destroyed if that one belongs to God. You know, it's, I don't, what, what, you want me to go say something? I'm not going to say anything. You know, this is, people sweat their own fevers. You know, they're, they're on their way to the world after seeing the truth. See, once your eyes are open, you have the, you've been born. That's a birth of consciousness. Once you've been born, once you're alive and you see the truth, um, you know, if you want to go play footsie with the world, you have to not see what you just saw. So they will never trust you, hence something will always go wrong on your way to your award ceremony. And then there's a lot of people that say they have faith that, you know, obviously uh, their faith is in the devil. It's in, it's in the world. It's in the flesh. It's in the created rather than the creator. But as we know from this, things which appear to us were not made from other things that appear. They're made from an invisible source. And made with great, great care and design. God already knows the thoughts, hopes and dreams, and everything people go through from before they were born to after they're dead. Already knows all that. They're trying to do a cheap imitation. They're all seeing eye. With all the surveillance and all the pre-crime and all the technology that they're working on getting inside people's heads and inside to, uh, that control... They will never be successful. They will never be as God. But they're imitating him. They're trying everything they can do to be all-knowing, all-seeing. All, and it's, and it's hilarious. It's like the Keystone Cops, um, you know, uh, being lauded as geniuses. It's incredible. The height of arrogance to think that you need, you know, and, and spend so many resources and let people starve to death so you can have your all-seeing eye when that all-seeing eye is just nothing but a poor 
not even a, it's not a, that it's a fake. It's just, it's, it's incomplete. It can never do what it intends to do, which is the control of all souls, tethering them to the pyramid, which is a, which is the my only way of saying that there's a technology behind the pyramid that harvests souls. And you saw what happened in the pyramids, right? That civilization fell. What happened in the Maya? It fell. What happened in 9,000 around the world? They all fell. Okay? They could not beat God. And the time travelers out there and all the aliens that were us at one time but mutilated themselves genetically fell and failed. Why do they have the earth? Because they need uh, a genome. It's a farm. What's the goal? To get out of here. Who goes? Those that have faith in him and seek him diligently like Enoch. Who doesn't, <laughs> who doesn't go? People that are made for this situation by God, they, there's nothing they can do about it. God didn't make them to go with him. He made them, you know, to, well, well he says, he wished that no one would perish. And it's, it's like, well, what do you mean by no one? You mean, you mean what species are you talking about? Also, let's go further with that interpretation. He wishes that no one would perish because, but at the same time, if they do, he already made them to perish. So right there, um, but you're at odds with scripture. No, because to believe otherwise would be to put God in a box and would be false and then I would be a liar like you, which I don't want to be. So I'll sit here in my obscurity, which is, which is intentional, and say what you can never say, because you would be hauled out of your church on your ear. And in other words, if you don't lie, you can't be a churchman, unless you're a good liar, just like a politician. And that's the way it's always been. As far as I'm concerned, it's been like that f from the very beginning. And I don't think there was ever a time in America where there was a good church. I think there was a spiritual battle and a struggle. And, uh, you know, that struggle is still going on today. They still build their obelisks and have their Statue of Liberties and all their other kind of icons. And all these are going to be in the dust at some point. None of those can save you. Man cannot save man just any more than a drowning man can save a drowning man. They're standing right next to each other, each tethered to, uh, you know, a ball and chain at the bottom of the ocean, and there's no way out. That one man cannot help that other man. So the seesaw principle doesn't work. You know, it's just another sacrifice to the devil that ends up being rewarded. Uh, briefly, just like when you, if you really want to bang for the buck, go get uh, an innocent uh, virgin and kill her. I mean, that's how they think. I'm, not, I'm, you know, I'm being facetious here. I'm not, I'm not being serious. But I am, but I am saying that uh, yes, as a sacrificial cult, they would want to go for the most innocent and uh, and sacrifice them for. So they would get material things. So whether it's a, uh, an orgiastic ritual, usually there has to be some death involved. Eventually people find out that it wasn't just being a prostitute, that there was a little more to it. Yes, yes, Mabel, people do die. It's weird who gets picked to die. It's weird how it goes around. It's mysterious. So we're all going to follow the rules so that we don't get in trouble of this thing that doesn't exist that we could never talk about anyway. That thing, um, let me talk about what you can't talk about. That thing is called slavery, dumbass. And that thing has you tethered. And if you don't get out of it by the time your time is up, you are as if you never were. Furthermore, it's a curse to your seed. In other words, everything, including your seed, is to be stricken from the record as if it never existed, and it doesn't exist. It's the weirdest thing, being in time, having to talk about eternal things, but no, friend, you don't exist in eternity, so you might as well just live it up. 
There's a lot of people that are like saying, you know, like ACDC, I'm on a highway to hell and uh, all my friends are going to be there too. So we're just going to rock it out in hell. It's like, no, I'm sorry. There isn't anything for you. Like there's no party in hell. Your concept of all that. I know you just laugh at, I know you're probably atheists. <laughs> you might be believers. I don't know. But uh, if I were, and I had written songs like that, I would probably say, well, I don't really, I would tell the kids that it's BS. It was just a period I went through. I would, be honest, but we can't ha have that because that would ruin the illusion and then people would lose money and then we can't have that. So they're, you know, I feel sorry for them. I feel sorry for everybody in that situation because they're all in the same situation. You know, we're stuck. And they, you know, it doesn't end, I think, with death. I mean, I think there's a recycling thing that goes on too. <laughs> of vessels and containers of souls. And um, it's a really serious situation. Uh, I exist in the New Jerusalem because I am the New Jerusalem and I exist right now. Well, then how is it then that I'm here out of touch with my true nature? I got a problem because I remember home. I remember anything you want to remember, anything like the most beautiful day you've ever had, the most ultimate memory you've ever had, the most amazing uh, vision of, of, of nature you've ever seen. It was all that and more. It was beyond Hobbitville, if you will. It was all that and more. Total fulfillment on all levels and all fronts, constantly uh, just a total love fest with no consciousness of time or passing of time and no need to slow down or speed up, everything perfection and ah, 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 ah. How in the world did I get here? And I have to go, well, it's God's will, of course. Of course. I'm not saying otherwise. I'm saying you're right, it's God's will. It's God's will. It is God's will that we go through this because it's God's story, his bat, his ball. But when I said the last time, the pinnacle of his creation is the New Jerusalem. I really meant, and I'm sorry I didn't say this, but it already exists, and so do you. So we have a problem, but home, that's home, by the way. When you say heaven and everything, that's what you mean is the you as that finished thing you already exist. Um, another term in Daniel and also in the book of Revelation is they will reign forever and ever. Uh, absolutely, uh, I am uh, is one. It is, you know, the completion and, and, and when that journey is complete, there is no journey, there was no journey. When it's complete, there are no, uh, there are no people and there never were. There is no earth and there never was. There is no space and there never was. There is no this and there never was. There is something else. But the, the, picture this like a bubble. Well, it's non-existent. I mean, that's, that's what we're dealing with. I know that's really hard for people to, to conceptualize, but just look at it this way. Time and space as we know it is not is just an artificial thing that God wants to do to produce a certain result and it looks to me i mean and i'm not maybe not be completely accurate here but it looks to me that he is proving himself as is as i am over all things in other words he's lord of his creation that he can create he can move things around he can do things but he's always lord if you want anything if you want to live if you want to breathe if you want to be conscious of him and him conscious of you and be eternal then you must seek him. You can't seek the world. You can't seek the treasures of the world, the trinkets, the this, that, the other thing, because they will not give you anything. Uh, be that as it may, um, in order for people to be a, a, a celebrity or some kind of important government person or corporate person or whatever, they have to uh, make their deal. And if they make their deal, then... Sadly, they're dead in, in ultimate terms. You know, that deal is their funeral. 
they decided to make that deal because they wanted, they did not have faith in the Lord. So they believed that this was it, and so they went ahead and got whatever they could, figuring that they might as well grab for all the gusto because at the end of this, that, that's it. And um, this, to, the other thing is this, this is nothing. Because the minute, you know, someone's crowned with celebrity status, this is the minute the clock ticks and they're, they're uncrowned. No one can hold on to anything. Time keeps slipping by. There's nothing here to see, folks. It's like, move along, there's nothing here. This is like a crime scene. Uh, the corruption of DNA was allowed to happen. There was obviously something that was beyond our pay grade in terms of understanding. And we were held in abeyance or put into a, situa- into a situation. At the same time, it's only the Lord that can get us out. He says very clearly, emphatically, those that overcome will be with me and those who don't will not. Overcome means the lizard, the hierarchy, the epaulets, the stripes, the Academy Awards, the celebrity status. One must overcome, or, or you know, the, 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 the belonging, the having a place, being in the hierarchy, being a slave, whatever. All of that is the reptilian hierarchy that's owned and operated by reptiles who are harvesting you for other things, figuring you'll never figure that out. You know, and keeping you intimidated with scary, spooky stuff so that you don't get out of line. And that's humanity. And God pulls souls out that he chooses. And it really comes down to that. I mean, that's kind of the long and the short of it, but that's, that's it. And people will go, oh, come on. Be one of us. Join. Ah, oh, come on. God didn't see. God's not going to reject you for, you know, some little sin like that. <laughs> um, no, I, perhaps you reject God, but light goes to dark, dark goes to light, that's in, bing, bang, boom, another one bites the dust, that's the end of it. And um, so I liken it to... Uh, My my feeling is that, uh, and you know, it, it, look, it's not even up to you. If you belong to God, you're going to, don't worry, he'll have you. Somehow he'll get you one way or the other if you're his. He doesn't lose any. Being his is inherent, the meaning inherently is you're his. You know, and he, if you behave badly, uh, if you're his, you're still his. He'll... You know, some one way or another, he'll, you know, he'll reel you in. Um, so there's no point. I'm not worried about people losing their souls because God always gets all that are his. And they say, well, what about the other souls? And I would, and then I would make a point. I'd say, eh, don't be so sad. Um, they don't exist. Your idea of multiplicity and all these souls is based on a false premise, a lie. Your perception of them existing doesn't make it so. All that exists is God. That's it. And, and anything that's him or of him or whatever is, exists. And anything that isn't doesn't exist. That would include people. You know, um, running to the devil makes one a murderer. And as I said to someone the other day, I said, you know, the reason that... I couldn't really conform to that situation in, of Hollywood and celebrities and that whole thing is because I just, I'm not comfortable with murder. You know, plain and simple. And that was, that's really been it. I'm just not comfortable with lying, murdering, stealing, that which doesn't belong to me. I, I just don't, don't think I have a right. And, 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 and I'm, yeah, you know. Um, I don't believe that I have a right. I don't believe that I actually have a right to do that. I, uh, 
I have a real problem. Um, when I was a small child, I knew that it was murder. I knew that it was death. I knew that um, signing on would be you hurting other people for your own gain. That was the issue. They tried to make it into some thing about sex. But that's just, I, for openers, I mean, that's, that's like an assumed thing. I mean, that's like, you know, there is no monogamy in that situation. You know, and um, uh, there's the harvesting of the uh, seed by the, uh, the circle of shame witchcraft queen. And that's always going to be there. And it's like bees making honey. They're, they're harvesting that life force. They're harvesting. But it's really not that. It's, it's more it's about death. It's about sacrifice of something that lives in exchange for something. It's a sacrificial cult. So that's what you have to understand about that. It's not a force of energy to use. It's the force of energy of death. Just, I mean, just a gross example. If you spill seed on the ground, you know, you ejaculate. It dies. It's a sacrifice, you know? So it's like, if you could just link all that together in the whole world and just use that as a sacrifice, but that's not it. There's blood, but anything, anything that can be, that is alive is a potential sacrifice for gain. Whether it's bodily fluids or whatever it is. I mean, that's, people, they go, I, I don't understand all that, but I, but, you know, I saw this funny movie, The Big Empty, where they, he goes, yeah, they were, you know, and I think they took our sperm. I, I'm just horrified at that. I'm like, and like, uh, yes, there's DNA. Uh, and then the other thing is there's the, the death cult, i.e. any kind of, um, it goes further than that. Every, every sacrifice is someone doing something against the word of God would be another little sacrifice, right? It's a little form of death. Um, you know, uh, perverse sex would be another form of, uh, of death because it, it's not in concert with the Lord or it's not leading to procreation or anything like that. It's just basically um, dying a little bit, you know? And then... You know, most of the poets, and I mean, I'm not alone here. I mean, most people that have written about all this, about the subject of sex and death. Um, some of the great poets of all time, including Yeats and others, wrote about sex and death. You know, sex and death. I think everyone has gone, has seen the parallel connection between sex, which is like a birth, right? But it's also a death called the little death and death, which is the big death. In a sacrificial cult, both are necessary. All of that is necessary to harvest for the power that it yields to humans who then use that power to establish their kingdoms. Period. If you know just what I said, then you know everything there is to know. Yeah. Every permutation of it or whatever is cultural and Different people have different styles, but basically it's like, you know, I take my mask off, you take yours off, and we're both on that same page, then we can rule the universe. <laughs> or, you know, I've seen a lot of people courted like, you know, some kind of a contest where they're courted and courted and courted, you know, as they're led to the slaughter, to the sacrifice, or to giving in, becoming a vampire, or whatever, uh, because there's a great bounty for those. And the funny thing is, if you belong to God, you can't, you're not going to be one of those, so no worries. Well, they can kill you, and you just go home, but I mean, it's, that's like jumping out of a rubber suit. So... That's basically what reality is and what every human being on earth faces. But they figure that most uninitiated or the unwashed masses, they call them, just don't know about all that. And it's like, I mean, they know a little bit, 
you know, they know how to conform to society so they can have a job and, you know, a life and whatnot. And, you know, to not, not deal with this subject. <laughs> they know that much. Anyway, this subject, I'm having a bite of cottage cheese. I'm sorry. I've got to keep the fuel going. That subject is the entire reason, the entire reason for Jesus Christ. That subject is the entire reason for the Bible to exist. Therefore, avoiding it in churches, synagogues, mosques, other religions, Buddhism, thisism, thatism, avoiding this topic is like avoiding the sun rising. If you don't deal with this topic, then you are of no good whatsoever because the people are in bondage and they need to be liberated. So you're supposed to talk about how to get them out. They will tell you, if you talk about how to get them out, you're going to be killed. We're going to get you. So they shut up. I mean, the whole idea of church is a joke because, because nobody, but nobody, but nobody deals with it. Further, they're monitored by the government because they're 501c3. So, uh, you know, there's no help there. There's, church is equals slavery. Slavery is church, period. So you knew that, you know. Um, atheism is also a religion, slavery, period. Politics can be a religion, slavery, period. Uh, wherever there are handlers and controllers, slavery, period. Uh, Jesus, look, being a free spirit, that's what you need to be. You need to be free. You know, if other people could be pissed off because you don't conform to what they think you should conform to or do what they want you to do, but a free spirit never does what other people want them to do. That's just the mark of the free spirit. All of you must, if you've got the freedom of Yahweh, meaning you, it, what he thinks is the only thing that matters, other people get pissed off at you because people keep trying to form these slave pockets of organization. That's why I handle my stuff loosely. You know, in other words, we're doing these projects and things and it's like, no, we don't have to be this all one big happy family. We're just kind of going along in the same stream together and then you know what? Then there'll be other projects and then they'll be gone and other people will come in and they'll be doing other things and I'm doing other things and we come together, we go apart. That's a free spirit. You know, oh, I'm going to lock you down for life. We're, a, we're the band. We're going to be loyal. You know, that's all BS. That never happens, and that never works, and that's all, all a recipe for misery. Every time it's tried. It's amazing how people keep trying that. Uh, so, no. You know, people have these ideas and these grandiose ideas about what's going to be. It's like, I don't even know what tomorrow's going to be. I just live for today. Mm. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, okay? So I got to live for today, for right now, for this moment. And that's going to make people upset. That's going to, right there, it's going to make people mad, exercising, or, or I think I'll go work on a tune after this. I think I'm going to go work on a, you know, at 4 or 15 in the morning, I think it's time to blast out, to turn the amps up to 10, and to rock out, baby, you know? I think I'll go do that. I just thought of it. I'm going to go do it. Right there. Just that, what I just said, pisses people off. I think I'll go invent um, something to give us free energy. How'd that be? That pisses people off. You've got to be a free spirit. You know, um, the Beatles fell short when they said, one thing I can tell you, you've got to be free. And then they made it about like, <laughs> never mind. But I mean, you know, one thing I can tell you, you've got to be free, meaning one thing I can tell you is Zeph, as just a frail person here, but with God talking to me, hopefully, the one thing I can tell you is you have to be a free spirit. You've got to be a free spirit. Your spirit must be free. You know? And oddly enough, the spirit is put in bondage 
when chasing after things of the world and of the flesh. <laughs> That's weird. And when denying those things, it seems that the spirit gets more free. Ultimately, I'm not going to eat you. You're not going to eat me. I can't feast on you. I'm not going to hold you down forever and hold you in a cage so I can siphon power off of you because I'm just going to keep you there like that because that's just I'm just a reptile. No, no. Any ties that bind, break them. Seriously. You know, they have all these workshops about codependency. Well, codependency is where there's like a situation you can't get out of and both are symbiotically locked in this thing where each one's feeding off the other and nobody can get away and they're just their weakness keeps them bound together so they're codependent that um, needs to be broken and that's what Jesus does all those kind of ties he breaks because you see it doesn't matter what they think now it matters what God thinks. doesn't matter what I think. It matters what God thinks. doesn't matter that I'm here at four in the morning or three in the morning. It matters what God thinks. doesn't matter how unorthodox my schedule is. It matters what God thinks. It doesn't matter what you think about me. It matters what God thinks. So I think today I'm going to just go do, take time and do uh, whatever. Something unpredictable. Because I can. I think I'll drive a new route. I know that they're fixing my base in town. So before that, I want to do a, a track. And then I'm going to take the long way into town to get my base. I think I'll, I'll just drive another way. <laughs> I'm being silly, but you know I'm making a point. What I explained about reality is really what it is. Um... All the trinkets of the world, to just sum up, all the epaulets and all the stars and all the Academy Awards and all the Grammy Awards and all the, the Boxing Awards and the, and the Medal of Honor Awards and all the things that are given are of Satan. I, it's, it, it, okay, I'll put it this way. Are from the reptiles, because that's the way they think. That's, I, I'm sorry, and they like that man wants to compete to, to get the little trinkets. They like leaving little crumbs for you. But make no mistake, it's a codependent relationship. You can't get away because you need that approval. And the lizards don't feel compassion and approval for people. They just feign it. Or they do it through their fallen ones. Or they do it, you know, but it's, they're more like the Chinese dictator's or like our own, who have masks on, who are just like the Chinese. You know, when they're dealing with people in prison camp, how cruel they can be in their court system and just sentence you to a thousand years or whatever and not ever think about you again and just let you starve to death and laugh about it. I mean, that's reptilian. It's not a human to be that way. But people become that way because they want power, but when they decide to sign the contract, what happens? Death in that moment, and then from then on, they slowly become a reptile. Or if you like, they become hybrids. Therefore, and, you know, Your Honor, with the logic that we put forth so far in the court, therefore, there's no need of salvation for those. Thank you. I rest my case, Your Honor. So there's no need for sorrow. Everything is good. Understand? Everything goes where it's supposed to go. And... Can someone who is deemed to be a, a reptile, a serpent, or whatever, uh, which is another species, uh, they can be in, in a human form, you know, because they need people in human forms to convince us to follow them. Okay, that's been allowed. But ultimately, can one of those come to Christ? The answer is absolutely not. No. No, a robot can't come to Christ. No, a hybrid can't come to Christ. No, no, the answer is no. But the answer is moot because there's no...